Welcome to the London Free Press Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Gilbert. The London Knights have signed 18-year-old Finnish right-winger Kasper Haltonen, who was drafted by the San Jose Sharks in the second round. And today I'm talking with London Free Press sport, uh, sports reporter Ryan Pyatt about what he'll bring to the Knights organization and what the season ahead looks like. Hey, Ryan, how are you? Hey, Rachel, I'm great. Thanks. Good. So tell me about Casper. First of all, who is he? Where Where is he from? Where has he been playing? We know he's Finnish anyways. Yes, he's, he's from Helsinki, which uh, most people that follow hockey know. Uh, it's a great, great hockey city uh, like London. And, uh, you know, he's he's a big, powerful guy. Like he's, the, the Knights haven't had one of these guys in, in a long time who who can kind of skate, he can dig in the corners. He's 6'3", 200 pounds, and he's got, if you ever see some highlights of him online, he's got a wicked shot, and he's going to fit in really well with, he, he's a dimension that they, that the Knights haven't had in a while. They haven't had a guy that have been able to score 40, 50 goals. You can argue Ryan Winterton last year was that kind of guy, but of, of course he was added at the trade deadline. Uh, and and a lot of the nights, uh, this is a, a fast, swift passing team. And, you know, sometimes you need someone to, to finish those pucks and you get Barky and Cowan out there. They, they like to, they like their creative players who like to move the puck and Jacob Julian's another guy. And uh, I think he's going to fit in great with, with, with these guys. That's, that's all the reports. Now, um, you, you know, obviously there's always an adjustment, right? When you come to North America to play for every one of these guys. But what I'm told is that he's the kind of player that can kind of, you know, be, be ready to go right out of the gate and he won't have that as many issues as some of the other guys that we've seen in the past. Would you mean like adjusting to just the culture, but then that might affect their play a little bit? Yeah, of course. Cause everything's brand new, right? It's yeah. just, we, we think of the kids that from Ottawa that come to London or, you know, maybe the Sioux or Sudbury or something like that. That's an adjustment and a culture change that we, we don't really think about. And, and you know, we've seen Russians and, and kids from Sweden and all that. And it, it really does affect them the first couple of months as they adjust to their new life. The Knights are better than most at, at getting the kids uh, acclimated. And, and, you know, first you got to join a team. you got to get new, you know, billets. you got to start finding food and places to eat that, you, you know, uh, you're kind of, uh, other than your billets, you're kind of you, you have to find places and and uh, yeah. to eat that, and, and places you like to go right in in your downtime and uh, you know I I think he's gonna I, I think he's gonna fit in right away and he's gonna score right away and, and produce right away and uh, that's gonna be a big plus for the Knights. Um, what was their what was the Knights' goal scoring like last year and then what are they hoping? I mean they're hoping he's gonna be the big goal scorer this year, I guess. Yeah, uh, the the thing about last year's team is. They didn't have anybody over 30 goals, which is, um, you know, you like to have a 40 or 50 goal guy in your lineup if you're, if you're, you, you know, to, for your power play. And I mean, you look at every level of hockey, that's what you're, you need to have one of those guys or you got to score by committee. And that, that's what the Knights kind of were last year. They scored by committee. The older guys, um, you know, you think of Sean McGurn and George Diaco and then Logan, you had from the back end, obviously he had 25 goals and that was the most in the OHL by a defenseman. So that really helped. But then we saw we saw the younger guys, uh, the Cowans, the Barkies, uh, those kind of guys emerge. And, uh, you know, you think of the back end, Oliver Bonk, who's, who's off, obviously a good offensive player too. And uh, they, they kind of, in the playoffs, those were the guys that were, were filling the net. And, you know, the Knights got in games. If you think of their last game of the season in Peterborough, uh, they lost 2-1. They scored first, and then they couldn't score again, right? And, yeah. you know, the the Hunters look at that sort of thing, and and they're like, well, we were one goal short. Uh, where, where's that goal, right? And a guy like Haltonen is a guy that comes in, and maybe he gives them that goal that they need in the big moment. And, uh, yeah, he's, uh, you know, the Sharks picked him in the second round. He was, he was all year he was kind of forecast as a first-round uh, pick in, in the NHL, a, a real great prospect. He captained Finland's under 18 team uh, which uh, Sam Dickinson was just on with the Knights and won won the gold medal with Canada and uh, you know it's a uh, you know when you when you show that leadership quality and, and you can score and, and you can dig in the corners and you got some tenacity that's that's all the stuff the hunters like right you think of the guys they've had over the years Max Jones Matthew Kachuk recently um, that that those are the pieces they're looking for and you know what so what he did last year Casper he he kind of played 
he played in the men's league, the, the first division in, in Finland. And he also played in the junior league. And, and kind of over there, it's when you join a club, it's not like here, right? You're, you can play anywhere in the club from, you know, U, U18, U20 uh, and, and, the, and the big club. And he didn't score much at the big club. And I think that that scared off a lot of, of NHL teams because they're like a lot of guys like Austin Matthews who went over there at 17, 18, they, they put up big numbers. Right. But he didn't, and he got, uh, he got banged up and, and it was, it's, it's a hard transition. Think of any 18 year old kid going to play against guys that are 30, 28. It, it, it's not easy. Yeah. And, but at the junior level, which is uh, not quite the OHL, but you know, the, a, a similar age, you're playing against guys your own age and that sort of thing. He dominated and, and he, he scored a ton. And just uh, recently in the summer, he went to Plymouth, Michigan with Finland uh, with, for, this, for the World Summer Show, Junior Summer Showcase, which, you know, obviously Canada and the U.S. is at. And, uh, he, you know, he was, he, uh, by all reports, he, and obviously the Knights went to talk to him there. And he was, he was really good. And uh, so he went ho back home to Helsinki, and he's going to come back. Uh, you, you know, he's got, he's got to go to NHL training camp and, and all that. But, I mean, the, most, most of the things I'm hearing is that he's probably going to go to camp and then start maybe go to the AHL for a bit, but then, you know, pretty much start in London, right? Okay. So, uh, well, I was going to ask, and you kind of covered it a little bit. What changed from last year to this year for him to come to, come to London? Yeah, I think I think part of the adversity he faced in, at home, uh, you, you know, you're you're in the men's league and it's it's not going too well, and you, you know maybe you're not on the best team or you know you're not competing for a championship. And and the draw here in London is, uh, and associate GM Rob Simpson touched on it yesterday is that we we we've talked to him for a year and a half. He saw us go to the league finals, like almost to the memorial, one one or two games away from the Memorial Cup. And, you know, these that's very attractive to these guys wherever they live in the world, right? They're like, I, I have a chance to play on a team that's going to play into May and June. These guys are these guys are hockey players. They don't want to be done in March and April. They want to play till May and June, right? That's mm -hmm. and get better. And obviously, uh, any anybody in the NHL will tell you we want guys who win. Uh, that, that's what they're looking for, the guys who have a history of winning. And, then, and the Knights bake that into their – development process they're like at some point here you guys are going to have a chance to win and you're going to learn about yourself right so that that was very attractive to him to come over here and play for a team that he knows he, he sees the hey he's the he's the third guy um he was there at the draft in nashville right and he saw you know oliver bonk london knights drafted by philly he saw easton cowan dra drafted ahead of him by uh, by toronto and then he gets picked and it's like, like you know what? The, look at look at the, the London. I I want to play with the, those skilled guys, right? Mm -hmm. And and it just all it all worked out. Uh, he wanted to give it a go in in the men's league at home, and now he's he's got a chance to come here and play in uh, you know arguably the best junior league in the world. Put up some numbers, and then go be, you know go to San Jose. Signed signed a contract last month with last month, which obviously helped the Knights recruiting once. Once the Sharks signed him, then they kind of dictate where he goes, right? Uh, his right. development path more than the team back home. So uh, obviously the team back home is going to, you know, they they kind of like say, okay, uh, you know, the Sharks are in charge of you now, right? So um, before it was just kind of the teams, the team in a, in a, a team like a OHL team, it doesn't, you, you know, it's they look at it as the same kind of level, right? So um, you know, that was a big, uh, that was a big decision by him. And it was, uh, the Sharks helped that process. They wanted him in London. They've had players in the past, uh, come to London with good experiences. So, uh, that, that was, uh, that was the path he wanted to go. And it, you know, and I think he wanted to do this too, uh, on his own. Yeah. So the, yeah. Um, are the Knights, uh, let's talk about the Memorial cup. Cause we, we didn't, we, we lost in the finals last year of the OHL, but are they putting together a team this year that they think is, is our, our bigger, uh, bigger contenders, I guess, for the Memorial cup. Do we think we could go all the way this year? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I think if people remember from 10 years ago, they, they went to the Memorial cup, they had Michael Hauser in net and a good defense. And that started, that wasn't even their year to go to the Memorial cup. It was like the following two years with, with Max Domi and Bo Horvat were a little older. And this time, you look at Barky, Cowan, and Bonk, and they weren't supposed to go to the league final last year. Like, obviously, Sarnia had the much older team, but they beat Sarnia, and then they gave, you know, they, it was, uh, 
50-50 with Peterborough for most of the series. And uh, and so that was like, uh, it reminds me of 10 years ago where they ended up going three in a row and four and six years. And, you know, this is this is one where they were kind of saying, okay, we, we got a chance for the next two years while Barky Cowan and Bonk are here to to get to more, more Memorial Cups. And obviously it's in Saginaw this year. Saginaw is going to be building a, a, a real strong team. They got Michael Misa, the the outstanding 16 year old um, uh, on their team. And the Knights are going to have to, they're going to have to beat them in the Western conference finals. Right, right, right now, from what I'm seeing, there's about four or five good teams and Saginaw and London are, are, are going to be among the best. And, and they will, the, you know, they're going to trade for guys. I, I would like, uh, you know, I would like to think that, this is a year where Mark Hunter will uh, will bring in. So if he needs some extra talent at the deadline, you know that's that's a move he'll make. He did it last year with Winterton to give this team to give the team a chance, and it almost worked. And in the next two years here, I think we'll see some moves to put them over the top and, and get to the cup in in Saginaw. How do you think this season will be different for the Knights from from last season? You know, just skill wise and and some of the guys that that they've acquired you met you mentioned some of them already yeah I think um obviously when you lose Brett Brochu that's uh that's a huge loss um he, he's been the best goalie in junior hockey for all of his career basically so that's uh they're gonna have to deal with that Zach Bowen's gonna have to step up they got uh young Medvedev that they just drafted who, who's showing a, a ton of promise he might be a year away uh they still got Owen Wilmore uh they, they, they got solid goaltending but that's that's a thing that most most Knights fans will be watching to see if they can keep the puck out of the net because the defense is second to none in Canadian junior hockey. They got all kinds of drafted guys on 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 the blue line, and and they're they should be outstanding there. And then up front, do they have enough scoring? And that that was one where we think they have enough scoring. We think they have more scoring than they did they did last year. And obviously, Casper Holtman underlines that um, that that thought that they will put more pucks in the net this year. Absolutely. Who are their biggest rivals? Do you think this coming season? You mentioned Saginaw is gonna gonna have a pretty good team. Yeah, I think every game it's it hasn't been like this for years, but every game against the Spirit will be like must watch TV, kind of like Lennon and Sarnia or Lennon Sarnia this year was kind of you know uh, you couldn't wait to go to the, there was energy in the ranks in both ranks that we haven't seen in in quite some time, like twenty years and. Uh, you know, I, I think that's going to be like in Saginaw. If any, anybody's ever, and Sa the beauty is Saginaw is not too far away. So, if Knights fans want to go on the road, and some and some do, and and the border is obviously less, you know, it's much better than it was for <laughs> for the most past couple During years. The pandemic, uh, yeah, yeah, getting over there, and uh, yeah. you know, it's it's worth the trip. I, I've gone to Saginaw dozens of times over the years, and it it is really is a great old arena. Uh, best smelling rink in, in the you got the beer nuts going and they got it's the best smelling ah. rink in, in the OHL. <laughs> but I think you'll see uh you know Kitchener's gonna take a step back. Guelph's Guelph's planning to be pretty good this year. Obviously London Guelph is uh Owen Sound too uh, uh with young Carter George in net. He he's an outstanding goalie. So uh that, that's uh he just won the U eighteen with with Dickinson and uh you know, I think I think the usual rivals say Erie's supposed to take a step up. Kitchener isn't. It, they got a new coach, a Finnish coach, which uh, it'll be okay. interesting to see if Casper Holtman knows the Finnish coach. Uh, yeah. Because uh, he's been involved internationally, and so Kitchener is supposed to take a step back this year, and um, you know, not kind of be clawing for the playoffs. And but well, Lennon Kitchener is always it doesn't matter what the teams are like. They're it, that's always a, a, a great one, and I think you'll see Ottawa the. London obviously doesn't play the East very much, but when they play Ottawa, Sudbury, Barrie, those, those are teams that I think those are games we've got to really pay attention to, too. Yeah. And when do we when do we start? When's the preseason and the season start? Oh, God, it, it, not very long. Not it's, very long now. Know, what happened in July, right? Uh, I know. It, it seemed like the season just ended there uh, in Peterborough. Uh, yeah. But that was uh, three months ago. And, um, yeah, so obviously at the end of the month, you'll, you'll start to see guys – uh, the guys that haven't skated, some of the guys have been here skating, but you'll see more of them start pouring in. And then really by the, the last week, August and early September, you got the exhibition games and, and then, and the hunters start picking their final, final roster. And, uh, you know, the, the regular season, uh, a little bit later, this, uh, the last couple of years, you're getting into the late September, uh, mm -hmm. uh, start. So, 
uh, lots lots of hockey, and I think Knights fans are, are pretty confident that uh, it's going to be a, a long, long season again this year. We'll have a good team this year for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Ryan. We're going to be watching your stories on LFPress.com throughout the season, of course. And thanks for being with us today. Anytime, Rachel.